Everybody, hope you're all doing all right out there. So recently I've made a few videos talking about licenses and then just as I was doing that, the, uh, you know, the motorcycle body came up with those proposals and that video blew up a little bit. And there's one comment that comes up through all of this stuff that I talk about motorcycles where, you know, you have to respect people's experience, but I also question their logic. Uh, and it's a simple thing, okay? So it's to do with stage licenses. And this is a generalized comment which I've read probably 150 times over the past few months. I passed my test 30, 40, 50 years ago. You know, I passed my test in the 60s, something like that. And uh, back then we just got on a 250 and then we got onto anything we wanted and it was fine. Look, I'm still here now. And as much as I agree with you that you did do that, that was the thing and that seemed to be okay, the problem with this argument to you know say well look i'm still here so it must be fine right well no because the problem you have there is that all the people that died haven't got the ability to comment on the video and say i'm fine or i'm not fine i'm dead there's a point here i forgot to add in which is also a lot of these people who say you know i've passed my test 50 years ago 60 years ago when did they stop riding do they actually know what it's like to ride on the roads nowadays that's an aspect to it. Another side to this, remember, is that in 1960, there was nine and a half million cars on the roads, and in 2020, there was 35 million, basically. So, you know, it's, there's a lot more cars on the road than there used to be. But still people say, you know, there should be, and I get why they're saying it, because the car license is what it is. You know, you, you do your theory, you do your test, and now you can drive whatever you want at 17, and the insurance makes it restrictive. Now, the thing is, people also complain about insurance being expensive. So how do you have insurance which is cheap enough to use, but also restrictive? Unless you're gonna really, really penalize particular car models. Um, I don't know, I don't know how that would work out. But you know, as I say, that is the way the licenses for cars work. Obviously, you just get the license and off you go. And people are saying it should be like that. As I also pointed out, to one of the people that I was discussing this with. In 1960, the fastest bike could do about 150 miles an hour, but the reality is that most of them were doing about 110, absolutely maximum. They also had about 50, 60, 70 brake horsepower at most. And this is talking about the top, top rung of the most powerful bikes for the time. Nowadays, you have things, you know, with 205, 210 horsepower. There's, if you were going for the fastest of the fastest, 1960 road production bike was, as I say, 150 miles an hour, about 80 brake horsepower, something, 70 brake horsepower, something like that. I'm trying to remember the number off the top of my head. I'm sure it was a, a Black Shadow. Black Shadow, no, a Lightning, or was it a Lightning? I think it was a Vincent Black Lightning. Can't remember, whatever, that is the point. Nowadays, you got, well, the H2R, which one is the most powerful road one? Has that got, 300 can you tune it to 300 i guess that doesn't class as a production if you're tuning it but it's you know it's a couple of hundred brake horsepower and i know people are going to say well the h2 is not you know that's a, that's so far above everything else that's out there yeah but then so was this bike of its day so as i say the question is really this do you think it would be a good idea honestly truthfully knowing what people are like now knowing what the roads are like now do you honestly truthfully think even after riding for as long as you have say for the people that have you know been riding for 60 years or 50 years or whatever do you honestly think it's a good idea to let 18 year olds 17 year olds out on whatever they want you know if you pass your a2 at, uh, at 19 and then two years later you get your full a you've two years riding experience they legally can get a thousand cc bike and lots of people do do it but what's the insurance like for them at that point it's going to be savage surely but then again i've heard some quotes of what people are paying for their insurance in recent times and i'm like you are paying that yeah and it's just like that's insane that's just an insane amount of money to pay to but, but okay if you're happy doing that and you can afford it do it jeez if you're a regular viewer, you'll know I've ridden for about 15 years now. And as I say, for me, in the past 15 years of riding, I think things have changed, or should we say, got worse on the roads enough 
that I really wouldn't be happy with, you know, a straight through license. I do feel like it needs to be staged in a way. Then there's the question, well, okay, if motorcycle licenses are staged, should car licenses become staged? You know, up to so many brake horsepower in your first couple of years, but after that it's de-restricted. But then that's the same as having an auto upgrade on an A2. So maybe they need to do another test to prove they can drive a more powerful car, even though they won't actually be using any of that power really in the test, because it's basically the same as what they were doing before. And then it doesn't make a difference if you're doing it on a, well, a 1.1 or a 700 brake horsepower Aldi. Uh, generally, driving it around normal town speeds, it's, it's not gonna change things. So that doesn't really make much sense either, does it? So I can understand. I mean, there is another aspect to this that I think a lot of people don't appreciate, which is that riding, and they, this is people who say, you know, well, I've got a car license, so I can sure be able to ride a bike. I mean, you know, are cars and bikes the same, really? Like, using the road is like 1%. You know, you don't have four wheels, cars don't lean, you don't have to worry about the physics, you know, you don't have to worry about hand clutches and hand controls, all that sort of stuff. It's not. It's very different riding a bike to a car, and I don't believe that I should be allowed to drive a car based on the fact that I've got a bike license. So I don't think that people with car licenses should be allowed to ride bikes. Sure, the, like the AM license with the 50 cc, depending on the year you pass and the things to that, but whatever. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to ride quads on my bike license. Now that's more like a motorcycle than a car is like a motorcycle. So why is it I can't ride quads assuming I can't, I'm sure that's right, but people want to be able to ride bikes. So yeah, that is my question to you, to all of you. Do you think that it would be a good idea to get rid of the stage licenses and allow people to ride anything? Don't make up a whole new set of in between the rules. Literally, this is the question, it's A or B. Answer A, should we allow people to just ride wherever they want with the license, like with a car? Or option B, should it be like it is now? Obviously you want improvements, I can get that, and changes and that, but we're gonna to have to say that it's grouped with the stage license way, because, you know, it's easy to answer this. Otherwise we're just gonna have a load of answers that are all individually constructed for each person. Well, that's another thing actually I've noticed through all of these videos. Lots of people would like to, like the rules, to be constructed in such a way that it works out perfect for them. Like, well, I think people who have had a 125 for two and a half years should be allowed to ride a 250 or a 500 if, if you know, this is this. Even though CBT isn't a full license, it doesn't stand for anything, you know, I'd like it to suddenly become much more than it is. And it's like, okay, so how long have you been riding a 125 for? Oh, I've been riding for two and a half years. Funny that, if we could guarantee that the only person getting hurt, if someone's stupid on a bike, is the person on the bike and no one else can be involved in the accident, I'd be like, Hell yeah, let them go. If, if people do themselves an arsty, that's their deal. It's only when other people get involved that I have an issue and people do get involved in motorcycle crashes a lot more than I sort of realized previously. I've seen all sorts of things of people getting hit and people getting hurt in cars. And yeah, it's very much a lower percentage, of course. Let's not pretend that it's, it's some big percentage, but people do get hurt by motorcycle crashes. Not just the rider is the point there. So yeah. Like the video if you like the video, share it around a bit if you wouldn't mind. And if you want to help support this channel, consider doing that through Patreon. I think I know what the answer's probably going to be, but of course, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just my opinion and most people think differently. So yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.